Okay, in this video, I'm going to show how to import images and audio into Adobe Animate. So this is uh, importing images into Animate is particularly useful because a lot of times you'll want to import your turnarounds in so that you can uh, match your character's proportions and keep your volumes consistent. And so I'm going to start a new project, and I, I'm not going to use these. Um, even this button right here, that, that, uh, that usually creates a 30 frame per second HD, which is not what we want in this class. So when you're creating a new project, just go to Create New, and this window will come up. And so now we have a better option right here. So we have, I'm gonna use HD 1920 by 1080, and this allows you just to make sure that you're working at 24 frames per second. And I'll press Create. So to start things off, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit right here. And importing an image, importing your turnaround is really easy. So I have it right here on my desktop, and this is a JPEG, I saved it as a JPEG right here. And all I need to do is just click on it and then drag it into my canvas. And then my image is imported. And in a lot of programs like Harmony and After Effects, you need to link your files and have an organized directory folder, which I think is a good practice no matter what. But in this program, when you import images and you import audio into it, it gets embedded into your file. So if I save my flash project and then these two files disappear off the face of the earth later, it's embedded in the file. So let's see here. My image is imported right here. And so you can see this line right here indicates the size of my canvas. And so I need to transform my image to be smaller. So I'll just go to the free transform tool. And be sure to hold shift because if you don't hold shift, it can scale disproportionately, which destroys the whole point of a turnaround. So hold shift. And I'll drag it in, and I'll click in the middle to pull it up right there. And then I'll zoom in just by clicking on fit, on win fit in window right here. So we have our image imported. You can see it's only taking up one frame right here. So just depending on how long you want your animation to be, let's say that I want this to be exactly two seconds long. I'll go to um, around frame 48, and I'll just press uh, F6 on my keyboard. So F6 right there and that'll extend that frame out. And a lot of times with these turnarounds, I don't like for them to be at full opacity right here. And so I'll just rename this real quick by double clicking. And one way to change the opacity is you can right click on the layer right here and then go down to properties. So again, where it says turnaround right there, I'll right click, go to properties. And then right here, you can just change the opacity by clicking on that. And you can customize the opacity just by dragging left and right. So let's make this 40%. And there we go. And so when it's time to animate, I can just lock that layer. And so now I can draw on top of it without worrying about um, moving it or scaling it by mistake or anything like that. It'll work purely as a visual reference. So that's importing an image into Adobe Animate. So importing audio. Um, clicking and dragging, in my experience, usually doesn't work. Yep, you see you get that little X mark with the audio. And this is just a little piece of royalty-free audio that I have right there, so that won't get flagged by YouTube or anything like that. And so to import the audio, just go to File, Import, and then go down to... Oh, right, I, so right now I need to go to Import to Stage, but that's grayed out. So what I need to do is I need to create a new layer right here, a new empty layer, I should say. And then now go to File, Import, and then Import to Stage right there. So I'll click on that and a new pop-up will come up. And the WAV file that I have as audio is on my desktop right there. And you can see right here, we can choose different file types. So if it's grayed out right here and it's not letting you click, just make sure that the the file type that you're using, whether it's MP3 or WAV, etc., is selected right there. So I'll just click on that, press open, and I've got audio right here. And um, yeah, so that's how we get audio, and I'll just uh, press return. And we've got audio in our scene, and so now when I animate, I can animate with this, and you can see that I have a uh, visual reference right here so that I can see where each kind of kick is hitting right there. So that's useful for dialogue, music, all that stuff right there. And so 
Just kind of one last thing is when you save your projects. So I'll just, I'm just going to save this as a trash file on my desktop. So I'll just call this trash. And it's on my desktop. So I'll just press save. And I saved it as the standard FLA document right there. And so just to show right here, so I'm just going to close this out. And this is the FLA file right there. And let's say that my music file and my turnaround file get deleted or moved to a different location. So Harmony, After Effects, a lot of programs are linking to those files. And when I try to open this project again, it won't, it won't be able to find those two files that I just moved. And so let me close this out. And so now when I open this file right here, you can see that, that that audio, that image, is embedded into that FLA um, file. So it's a good practice to, instead of what I'm doing right here, where I'm moving all my files all over the place, I still would like you all to create a directory and use it. But it, unless something gets corrupted or something like that, your file should be an embedded into the FLA. So. Um, with that said, the practice that I usually do is it doesn't really matter if you're working on your desktop, your hard drive, anything like that, but you know, I'll just call this project animate demo. And generally speaking, I'll have, you know, my FLA file in there and then any images, audio that I'm referencing, I'll create folders right here, images, oops, would help if I could spell. images and then audio and just put the files in here and so this will be really helpful because just it's it'll be a lot easier to back up your work because everything that you're doing for that particular project is in this folder and you know if you try to open your animation project a year from now and you're looking all over your computer for wherever you threw your your music and your images if you want to kind of make any kind of adjustment that's unforeseen or anything like that it's you know where it is you know it's, it's going to all be in that project folder right there